I'm seeing that Nvidia's driver level smooth motion frame generation is now available on 40 series cards. Previously, it was locked to the 50 series cards. However, I'm gonna go through the process of getting it installed right now, which isn't quite as simple as you might think, because despite the fact that I'm on the latest drivers, I've plugged in an RTX 4070 Ti Super, I don't see the driver level frame generation available. We're not looking for the DLSS override for frame generation. We want Nvidia smooth motion, which adds frame generation to games that don't otherwise support it. This is similar to like lossless scaling where it's not game integrated, it's just interpolating between the two frames that you see without any game integration. However, I'm not seeing it right now, even when I click on games that should support it and I am on the latest drivers. So what's the catch? Well, if we look back at these kinds of news articles reporting on this, the key is that this is only available in uh, a developer series driver. That's the catch. So we do have to sign in to a developer account in order to download the correct driver. And so you will have to, uh, you know, sign up as an NVIDIA developer or whatever, but then you will be able to download the driver. Let's go ahead and go through the process of enabling this and double checking it's working uh, in this video. So we have to sign up here for an NVIDIA developer account because again, these aren't publicly released drivers. If you're watching this video in the future, it's possible that the public release now has these, but as of the time of filming, it's just a developer only feature. So you type in your email, you have to say what sort of business and developer stuff you're doing. I guess you can click other and away you go. I'm not gonna show you guys my email address. Once you've signed in as the NVIDIA developer, it should allow you to download the 590.26 game ready drivers. And we just wanna run that installation process. All right, I installed the driver and restarted the PC, and the, which is always best practice after a driver install. Anyway, started up the NVIDIA app and check this out. On Elden Ring, I am now seeing the option for smooth motion. I'm gonna go ahead and try turning this on, uh, and then I want to see if it is indeed actually working. Because just because this preview driver has enabled it in the settings doesn't necessarily mean it's actually working, so let's actually find out. Now, there's a reason why I just started up Elden Ring, and I do think this is actually working, and that's because Elden Ring has a 60 frames per second cap, which means that even though I'm on a very powerful graphics card, where at these settings, I'm currently at uh, 1440p resolution. I did max everything out though, ray tracing and everything else maxed out, but at 1440p, uh, you know, 4070 Ti Super is a powerful graphics card, right? Uh, but the thing is that because this game has a built-in 60 frames per second cap, but my monitor goes all the way up to 240, this is a good candidate for driver level frame generation. The game itself doesn't have frame generation built in. Generally, a built-in frame generation will be better than a driver level frame generation like Nvidia's Smooth Motion or AMD's AFMF or a third-party app like Lossless Scaling because if it's built into the game, it has access to things like motion vectors and knows more about what is a HUD element and what is not, things like that. Whereas when you're doing it through just the driver level, uh, it has less access to that kind of information which can decrease the quality of the generated frames. But this game's a good candidate for it because there is no built-in game frame generation to use, and it has an annoyingly low built-in frame rate cap, like 60. But notice that if we check out my frame rate counter in the top left, we're actually getting 120 frames per second on the left, motion fluidity here. By the way, this is kind of a side note, but bonus information for today's video. Uh, I'm use, currently using the new Steam uh, uh, performance overlay. This is actually my first time trying it out. I just thought that would be kind of fun. Uh, so Steam recently updated its performance metrics uh, to where, well, you could have it just as low as, you know, I just want to know the FPS. I could have more details, including all sorts of stuff or just FPS details, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and we see it here. Uh, pretty cool. Anyway, the point is, it is indeed giving me 120 FPS of output when the game is capped to 60. So we are, and by the way, I can just see on my screen, this is definitely more motion fluidity than 60 FPS would normally get. Now, a couple of key notes before we go into like image quality testing, maybe try it out in other games or versus lossless scaling, see which one I'm liking better. It's important to note that you're watching a fixed frame rate YouTube video at 60 FPS. I'm capturing it at 120 and my monitor goes all the way up to 240, but you're seeing a fixed 
fixed refresh rate at uh, 60. And if things are slightly out of sync with that, you can get some screen tearing. So when I move here, if you see a little bit of screen tearing, uh, which I'm kind of getting in, in the bottom, kind of in the middle of my screen right now, that's a capturing artifact. On a variable refresh rate display, that's not gonna be noticeable in person. That's important to note. However, some artifacts here are a result of the frame generation. Uh, for example, look at the compass in the top, uh, top middle of the screen. Do you notice that like the north, east, west, etc., those can kind of jitter and blur. That's a frame generation artifact because like I said, using driver level frame gen, the game is not actually aware what is a HUD element and what is not, and it often struggles with things like that. However, if I'm not staring at the HUD, if I'm just running around, I would say that the quality of the generated frames here are passable. I think a lot of people would prefer the 120 frames per second of motion fluidity uh, compared to only having 60 FPS, but at the trade-off of some little bits of uh, uh, image quality artifacting. For example, as the character moves here, uh, if you look around the edge of his sword, the edge of his body, as new things are revealed, the previous frame, because what, what the frame generation is doing is it's taking two frames, slightly delaying showing you the newest one in order to take these two pieces of information and kind of guess what happened in between. That's what it's doing, right? Uh, so if it doesn't have like the grass that was behind the character in the previous frame when it then reveals the next one, it really doesn't know what's supposed to be going on there. So things get a little bit blurry. And, um, uh, again, HUD elements and things like that, uh, especially when turning quickly, those are getting a little bit blurry as well, a little bit garbled, but again, I am getting a lot of additional motion fluidity uh, compared to doing this um, you know, without it turned on. Now, I do want to maybe take a quick look at uh, what if we compared this maybe to something like lossless scaling, which could already do the same thing effectively uh, as what we're getting now through NVIDIA's driver level. Actually, one thing I wanna test out here is um, I, I think to turn on and off smooth motion, you have to do it when, the, you have to like do a full game restart, which when we compare this to lossless scaling is gonna be what I think is gonna be one of the advantages of lossless scaling is that kind of convenience of turning it on and off whenever, whatever. Let's see if I'm right about turning it off having to do a game restart though. So let's try turning smooth motion off. Uh, uh, although, uh, let's see, let's make sure we were actually on the Elden Ring settings. I, I think we are, but let's double check so I'm sure we're fair. Yes, we are on Elden Ring right now. Have smooth motion set to off. And now I'm popping back into the game and I'm curious if it actually disabled it. No, it's definitely still on. We're still, still seeing 120 FPS. Uh, and we are going to um, uh, have to actually restart the game when turning it on and off. So you have to turn it on and off before you start the game in order to get it uh, get it up and running. So that's slightly annoying. All right, so I've restarted the game and uh, it does indeed have now just the 60 FPS and we can compare, again, you're watching a 60 FPS video, so I can say that in person, uh, this is clearly less motion fluidity when I pan the camera like this at 120 FPS on my 240 Hertz display, I was seeing a lot more motion fluidity. However, also notice that we've cleared up some, uh, some artifacts though. Uh, the uh, compass on the top of the screen, the north, south, east, west, etc., all look smooth when I pan the camera. And also the character, as he moves back and forth across the grass, has much less garbly wobbliness uh, around like the sword and the edges as uh, frames are revealed behind it. So by using, uh, by turning the frame generation off, we have fixed some image quality artifacts, but we, I have lost a lot of motion fluidity. Remember a 60 FPS YouTube video isn't showing you how uh, that entire fluidity difference that you would be seeing uh, in person like I am, that's always important to note. But now let's compare this to lossless scaling. So lossless scaling, a lot of you are probably familiar with. It's a $6 app on Steam, so it does have a paywall. However, it is um, not incredibly expensive and it uh, doesn't require you know, real specific hardware. For example, this video is all about how the 40 series from Nvidia is finally in a preview driver getting access to smooth motion driver level frames when the 50 series has had it for months. And you know, uh, Nvidia still has locked out 20 and 30 series cards from any sort of Nvidia branded frame generation. Whereas lossless scaling can, uh, has already been working on 40 series GPUs and 20 and 30 and even 10 series GPUs, etc. The point is, um, lossless scaling has some advantages in compatibility. 
Now, uh, essentially here, it can also do some other things like uh, smooth motion is just a times two fixed frame multiplier where it takes two frames, guesses what's happening in between, puts it on the display. Uh, this can do that, which is what, what we do here with the latest version of LSFG, fixed mode times two, it's gonna do the same thing. But this could also do multi-frame generation, although I think sometimes the quality of that isn't good enough for my tastes. And it can even do adaptive frame generation where you just set a frame rate target and it tries to hit it, which is pretty cool. Uh, now, anyway, we'll try the times two mode for the most direct comparison. Now, you can either just click scale and then focus on the window after a countdown, or you can use a hotkey like Control alt s uh, I think I'll just go ahead and click the scale button, and then it counts down. I need to focus into this window. I'll pan the camera, and I will instantly notice when it kicks in. Yeah, I can tell right there it kicked in. Things suddenly look a lot smoother to me in motion, but I'm now starting to see some similar, but not exactly the same artifacting to what we were seeing with smooth motion. Just one of the things I wanted to look into. Uh, again, focus on the compass up, up above, uh, overhead as I pan the camera. The glitching and weirdness that's going on here looks different than the smooth motion ones did, but it's still struggling with that HUD element. Again, neither of these are built into the game like a true DLSS frame generation or an AMD FSR frame generation implementation, so they can't really deal with HUD elements particularly well. Also, if I look at the character as I run back and forth side to side, um, Again, some people are more perceptive of this or, or bothered by it than others, but I see that warbliness around the character's edges and around like the sword. Uh, you know, if I swing the sword, swing, swing arms, etc. I guess I don't even, do I not have a right hand sword equipped right now? That's dumb. Anyway, <laughs> I don't even know what this character is, guys. Uh, this is just whatever, uh, I, I beat the game and then I, I, oh geez, I'm in combat, we're screwed. All right, anyway. Uh, the point is, um, while I'm talking, I probably shouldn't try to fight when I haven't played Elden Ring in forever, but anyway, that the, um, uh, I'm seeing similar artifacting issues to what I saw using NVIDIA's uh, frame, smooth motion frame generation. Because in the end, they are pretty similar techniques. They are driver level frame generation without access to the game information, and they both have their faults. Um, now, a lot of people will prefer the motion fluidity in a game like this that's frame rate capped to, uh, to not having it on. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this enemy to stop chasing me by resting. <laughs> but another thing you'll notice is, wait a minute, uh, my frame rate counter in the top left, ah, I meant to, here, right there, <laughs> says 60. It doesn't seem like it's actually working. I meant to drag myself up to point at that, but uh, I, I messed up. Anyway, I'll just drag that down to me. Uh, so that doesn't mean it's not happening. Like I said, I could instantly tell when that kicked on. It's very much is generating frames, but it seems like Steam's uh, overlay isn't picking them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Steam's uh, performance overlay. It just doesn't seem to pick them up for whatever reason. And that's one thing about frame generation and different frame generation techniques is they are often not compatible. Uh, with some frame rate monitoring software. Sometimes they get picked up, sometimes they don't, kind of depends. Uh, anyway, depends on the software and the frame generation and the game and all that. But uh, not, to be, uh, not to be undone, uh, we do actually have lossless scaling itself does have its own frame rate counter that will detect the uh, lossless scaling frame gen frames that are being generated. It has draw FPS, we can turn that on. Uh, and now we should see in the top left of the screen uh, that it says 60 slash 120. 60 is what the game is actually rendering, 120 is what's being output to the display. Um, so it is indeed doing it, and no, it is not just writing a 120 there, and this is a placebo effect. I can tell, again, I'm on an actual high refresh rate display, you're on a 60 FPS YouTube video. I can very much tell the motion fluidity difference. When I pan the camera, it is much more stable in motion, lots more motion fluidity, and so there is definitely some benefit to doing this, but I do also, I'm the kind of person who notices the little artifacting glitches around the character and in the HUD elements. So personally, I'm gonna be honest, I don't usually use frame generation, uh, especially ones that aren't integrated directly into the game, just because I am hypersensitive to the types of issues that it does cause. But that's just me. Anyway, uh, so I would say that at least in this game, 
Uh, image quality wise, I'm not seeing a huge win or loss for either technology, but I will say that lossless scaling is more compatible, easier to use. I can turn it on and off in game. I wanna turn it off, I can just unscale. Boom, it's off. So we can then directly compare. As you can see now, well, maybe not, there's less motion fluidity. I'm on a 120 hertz display again, et cetera, whatnot. Uh, but again, the uh, HUD elements now look stable. Uh, the character in motion, swinging the sword, all of that, once again, uh, none of those artifacts anymore. So that is, uh, I, I think, the comparison here so far. I will mention that I think lossless scaling still also has some other benefits. Uh, for example, you can actually run it on integrated graphics if you have one. So uh, if you have integrated graphics in your system or even a secondary graphics card, uh, you can do that because frame generation has some performance overhead. Uh, we weren't noticing it in this game uh, because the game was already capped at 60 FPS, which is below how fast my GPU could have been rendering the game. So even though it took some GPU horsepower, uh, it was going to stay above the 60 FPS anyway, so it wasn't really harmful to performance. But if you're using this in a game where you, uh, you're actually GPU limited on your performance, uh, offloading that frame generation calculation to a second GPU or an integrated GPU can be of some benefit. Uh, but uh, you are supposed to plug the, uh, this is something that might not be obvious, you should plug the monitor cable, your a HDMI or, or display port or whatever, into the GPU that's doing the um, doing the frame generation. And that's a bit annoying if you're gonna be only using this in certain games and having to flip your monitor capable around and whatnot. So anyway, uh, there is that uh, to keep in mind. But again, lossless scaling can even go into the times two, times three, times four modes, etc. cetera. Uh, it can do the adaptive mode where you just type in a frame rate target and it jumps to it. Um, it has, so it has some benefits, and again, it also works on just about, not just any game, but even, uh, you know, just uh, video windows. Maybe you're watching YouTube, you could just scale the YouTube window, and it works. So honestly, for six bucks, lossless scaling can do uh, pretty much what, uh, what NVIDIA's smooth motion does and more. That being said, I'm nice. it's nice to see the smooth motion technology uh, expanding support to more GPUs, and it is nice to have if you don't want to spend $6 on some third-party app to get your driver-level frame generation. So there is that. I'll also say from a compatibility uh, on games list thing, uh, also that the NVIDIA app has to actually detect your game and have whitelisted it for smooth motion support, and that's not the case for every game. Uh, so that can be a little bit annoying as well from a compatibility perspective, um, so where again, I think lossless scaling does um, have some advantages. So uh, that being said, sometimes the frame generation quality can vary from game to game. So if you're finding you're getting a bad result with lossless scaling in one game, you might try out smooth motion uh, and see if it does a better job for you. Or um, you know maybe there's a difference in latency that you're perceiving, because frame generation can also introduce latency make the game slightly less responsive because when you hit your button for uh, uh, for something to happen, it's delaying showing you a frame in order to use it to guess what happened in between and then show you the in-between frame before the other one that was rendered. So there is some latency penalty to both of these technologies, but again, it could differ game by game and things like that. So I think in the end, it's good to have this. I'm glad it's available now to more people and uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you are already using lossless scaling, I'm not sure that you're really gaining much that you didn't really have before. But it's nice to have options. Like I said, if there's any situations where you're not happy with how lossless scaling is working out, maybe try this one. Or like I said, maybe you don't want to spend six bucks on lossless scaling. All right, hopefully you guys found this video useful and or interesting. Remember that currently, as of the time of filming, this is in an NVIDIA preview driver, which you're having to get through the developer, um, you know, sign up. And that is not... Um, uh, you know, preview drivers, uh, you know, they might not have your, your latest uh, uh, game support. It, sometimes it maybe it has issues that hasn't been fully tested out yet, etc. So honestly, unless you really need this feature, want to play around with it, there's probably no great need to go around and download this and try this out, but it could be fun. Uh, I'm assuming if it's in this preview driver that we'll probably see a full release version of it soon. Uh, which uh, would be a another t uh, maybe an easier chance for everybody to check it out. But hopefully you guys found the early preview uh, useful and or interesting, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.